This is Joe Maceres from May Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to talk about uh, a question that, uh, well, it doesn't really get answered or, or even in many cases brought up, but it's something that you might worry about or have worried about if you've ever uh, talked about exponential functions. Uh, I want to talk about what's the difference between the equations y equals b to the x and y equals e to the kx. Now, both of these are called exponential functions. And it may be a little confusing to you that that's the case. Uh, typically, you'll see the y equals, uh, well, at least the form of y equals b to the x when you're first doing algebra, uh, specifically advanced algebra. But later on, when you, you talk about uh, either pre-calc or sometimes, of course, into calculus, and uh, when you talk about physics, they're going to bring up this equation y equals e to the kx. And the question is, why is this also an exponential function? Why aren't they using what they taught us, the y equals b to the x? Well, I'm going to kind of sh hopefully show you and explain to you why they're b actually both the same thing, because that's what it amounts to. All right, we're going to look over at the Apple Grapher to help us verify our results. And what I first want to give you a feel for is what is y to the... Uh, uh, or sorry, y equals e to the x. Now before we talk about that, let me just remind you that in the past videos on exponentials, we talked about an equation that had the form of y equals a times b to the uh, x minus h, okay, and then plus k. All right. Now, I'm not going to type this in any further. I'm not going to hit the return because we didn't define any of the parameters and it's just going to give me an error. Uh, we had looked at this previously and said that b basically controlled whether or not it was a growth function or a decay function. If b was between 0 and 1, it was a decay function, and if b was greater than 1, it was a growth function. Uh, a basically was a stretch in the y direction um, if a was greater than 1, and it was a compression in the y direction if a was less than 1, well, between 0 and 1. And if it was negative, well, then it would just flip the graph around the x-axis. h was a shift uh, either left or right, depending upon the value of h, and k was a shift up or down. So that's what we did previously. Now, if I'm letting h and k be 0, that basically gets rid of all of this stuff. Whoops. Let me get back. There we go. Get back up into the exponent. And we'll just have a times b to the x. And if I further let a just equal 1, we get the equation y equals b to the x. Now, I'm just going to look at something fairly simple. We're going to look at y equals 2 to the x. I'm going to let b equal 2. This is just one particular example of an exponential growth function. And there it is. Okay. Let me uh, move this down just a little bit. Okay. There you go. Um, I also want to show you another example, one of these, y equals 3 to the x. Okay. And I'm going to turn these both into blue so you can see these as separate from the next one that I'm going to do. All right. And notice that the y equals 2 to the x is actually a greater function in terms of its y value, what it, what it equals, compared to y equals 3 to the x, which is underneath on the left side of, of the axis, that is, on for x being negative. For x being positive, it's actually less than. So the, shift, the, the, equate, the equality point is at the point 0, 1. That's where the two equations are equal. And in other words, if I'm putting in 0, both of these will end up being y equals 1. All right. So, and there's the equation y equals 3 to the x. It's the exact opposite. On this side of the graph, it's less than 2 to the x, and on this side, greater than. All right. Now, let's go ahead and put in the uh, equation y equals e to the x. Now, this is not something to be afraid of. Um, well, I guess it is if you're, you don't know what it, you're looking at. But what I want to tell you is that e is just a number. And you should think of it as just a number. And specifically, it's a number between 2 and 3. Watch what happens when I hit return here, where this graph ends up. Well, it ends up right between the two. And it's very, very closely related to the y equals 3 to the x. It's very close to it, especially on this end of the graph. That is for x less than 0. It's very, very close. Um, obviously, it's not exactly equal to it. It's a little different. 
The value of E itself, that number that it is, is an irrational number, just like pi was an irrational number. And that means that it keeps on going. For example, pi was 3.14 dot dot dot. Uh, e is a number that just does that exact same sort of thing. The number is about 2.718 dot dot dot. Uh, you can use a calculator to get a little uh, better result, but um, basically that's the number. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to talk about how that's related to an equation that looks like this. And you'll often see this in physics, something like y equals k to the x. Uh, and as I hit return here, it's not going to be happy because I haven't defined the k value. But how is this related? Well, certainly if k is equal to 1, it's the same thing as this one. But it turns out that if I pick different values of k, I can actually make it either be this or this or this. So in essence, this is the same thing as y equals b to the x. Now, I'm going to do this in two ways. One, you might expect how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to define k and let it sweep through those values. Let me go ahead and do that to start with, because that's an easy thing to do. We've done this plenty of times. k equals, and I'm going to start with k equals 1. And let me go ahead and pick this particular equation and make it red so you can see it as being different than the other three. Okay. So right now, it's right up on top. It's exactly on top of this one, which is the black one. This one's the red one. So you can see it's right up on top of it, and that makes sense because k equals 1. 1 times x is x. This is e to the x, just like this is. All right. Now, let's go ahead and uh, animate this parameter. And I'm not going to do too much of an animation here. What I'm going to do is just basically let this go from 2 to 3. Kind of slowly. Uh, I guess we'll do, um, let's do about uh, 41 steps. Let's do that. And uh, you're going to see what's going to happen here. And let's go ahead and hit that. Okay, this was not what I was expecting because I'm not making it 2 and 3. Okay, let's forget about that. Uh, we're going to have to make it something else. Let's make it from 0 to 2. I think that will do it. We'll put us in the right neighborhood. Okay, there it looked like it was pretty close to 2, and there it looks like it's pretty close to 3. Okay, let's see if we can get a value that's pretty close to 3. That would be, let's see, I think I had these backwards. Yes, I'm sorry, this one was 2. This one was 2. So around 0.7, when k is about 0.7, that's when we're going to get something that looks like 2 to the x. And we'll actually find out a much closer value uh, than, than this 0.7. You can see that it's, it's not quite perfect. It's not a perfect fit, but it's close. It is very close. Now, we can change this to 3, and that looks really close. It looks like about 1.1. It's, it's like almost right on top of the 3 to the x. Uh, we'll double check and see that those values are correct, but even this is probably not the exact value, although it's, it's probably pretty close. All right, let's go ahead and stop this. And I'm going to show you how to figure out what k has to be to transform, uh, well, let's say transform this into this. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm just going to show you the, the mathematical steps. Uh, I'm not going to explain any of the, the theory part. You're going to have to look in your book for that. But we're basically looking for uh, the, a way to make 2 to the x equal to e to the kx. Okay. Uh, now, a little bit of observation and a little bit of a trick here, that trick being, let's note that e to the k to the power of x is actually the exact same thing as e to the kx. Uh, you may have to look at your powers. If you remember, let me show you an example power. Uh, this is not going to be happy again because, well, it should have been, well, because there's two equal signs, that's why it's not happy. Uh, but suppose I had something like x squared cubed. 
what would that be? Well, x squared cubed, well, that's going to be x squared three times multiplied together. So x squared times x squared times x squared, right? And that's the same thing as x times x times x times x times x times x, which is the same thing as x to the sixth. In other words, a shortcut to get this 6 is just to take the 2 times the 3. So that shows you that you can take that 6 and break it up in any way you want. In this case, we did it as 2 times 3. So we can take the kx and break it up into a k times an x, the x on the outside. So this, is, this form is just like what we have here. This form is like the x to the 6th. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And what that now means, what this equation now tells us, the one that's here, is that since there's an x here and there's an x here, then what that tells us is the 2 has to be the same thing as e to the k. So we can write down 2 must equal e to the k. Let's write that like that. And right now it's going to not give me the correct answer because it's not true. Actually, I was expecting it to give me a uh, logic sign here, but it didn't bother to do that. Uh, in order to f now remember what we're trying to do is figure out what the k value has to be to make this true. And to do that, all we have to do is get that k out of the exponent. Now the way to do that is to use a trick, to use a logarithm. Now if you're not familiar with logarithms, well, don't worry about it too much. I'm just going to show you that what we would do is do a natural log of both sides. And Basically, because ln is a natural log, it's looking as a, uh, it's, it's effectively a log base e. It basically says if the number that's inside, so to speak, inside the natural logarithm is written as e to some power, then it's going to tell me the power. So, in other words, this is just going to give me k. And there it is. k has to be the natural log of 2. All right, great. What is the natural log of 2? Well, let me go ahead and get rid of all this, actually. I'm just gonna... Well, actually, that was good right there. Natural log of 2 is 0 0.6931. Now, remember we had our k being various things. I think we said that it was 0 0.7 when it was close to 2, and there it is. Okay. Now, this little dot down here is just this statement saying the natural log of 2 is equal to this, so don't worry about that. Uh, if I, instead of putting in 0.7, remember we, we didn't have quite the overlap here. It was close, but not, no real cigar. Uh, if we put in natural log of 2, it snaps right on top of it. So, that's what we would need this to be, what the k would be, in order for 2 to the x be equal to e to the uh, kx, we'd have to have k be the natural log of 2. Uh, let me see if I can come over here. If I get rid of this, come up here and put down natural log of 2. Let's see if it'll give me a true. Oh, that was an interesting deal. Well, it clearly doesn't know what to do with that. So uh, this happens sometimes when it's trying to do... Uh, uh, something that it doesn't expect to do, and, and that's clearly this. All right, so let's not worry about this. Let's get rid of that. Uh, I think this is good enough that it shows that the red one is now on top of the 2 to the x. Okay. The blue and then the red. Okay, let's turn the other two off. Blue and then the red. So they're right on top of Okay. Now, if we were to put a 3 here, if we were trying to emulate this equation, y equals 3 to the x, let's turn this off, turn that back on, what would we have to have? Well, clearly, uh, there would be a 3 right here. And if there's a 3 right here, then the next step would be to put a 3 right here. So let's go ahead and click on this and find out what value that is. Remember that we said that it was close to about 1.1, so let's see what the natural log of 3 is. Well, pretty close. If we were going to round that, that 0.09 to that digit, it would end up being 1.1, exactly what we thought. So let's come back over to here now, 
And if we change the natural log of 2 to the natural log of 3, that should be the exact value, and it should be right up on top of it. So again, here's our y equals 3 to the x. Here's our y equals e to the natural log of 3 to the x. Okay. So what's the end conclusion? The end conclusion is y equals b to the x. That form is, is actually identical to y equals e to the kx. You can always turn one into the other if you like. It's, it's not very difficult. It does take some log rules. or It doesn't have to be natural log, but some log rules to help figure out what the exact numbers are. For example, natural log of 3 being 1.0986. And by the way, that's also an irrational number. It keeps on going. It's just rounded it for our little benefit here. Uh, but that's about it. So uh, hopefully you're convinced that these two types of uh, exponential functions are in fact the exact same thing, just written in different forms, and, uh, and hence they both need the name exponential functions because they're the same thing. Um, well, that's it. Let's go to the end credits. Um, we were talking about the difference between y equals b to the x and y equals e to the kx. Uh, my name is Joe Maciars. I'm from A Tutoring Enterprises. Um, that's my website there, my email, my phone number. Uh, I tutor online and in person in physics, math, and chemistry. Um, and I misspelled chemistry. Let's put a little R in there. Okay. And uh, also, I do a little bit of engineering. And um, hit the like button if you like the video. Um, if you enjoyed it, and um, if you thought it was really useful, maybe you send me a dollar and my PayPal account, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, improve our technology here so I won't have to be scrolling the screen by hand. And uh, here we're going to have a little uh, white screen so that some links can come up to previous videos and videos in the future. And um, I really hope you enjoyed the video and hope you got something out of this one. Um, I'm not sure why a lot of books don't go into the explanation of why b to the x is the same thing as e to the kx, but uh, maybe they just think it's too easy to worry about. Uh, yet at the same time, when I ask most of my students if they know what the difference is, they they really can't say. They don't. They think they're different, and they don't really know what it's about. So hopefully this helped you understand that those are the same things, and uh, I hope you get a chance to watch the next video. Thanks.